Please, you guys should talk. Anything, anything, if I remember anything. I mean, last week we said a lot of things. I mean, you know, just anything you can remember because it's kind of a progression class. What we did last week will usher us to what we're going to do for today. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, last week was our introduction class, and we were taught the basics of data from data, what data source is to data set to visualization and dashboard. And we were introduced into Power BI. We were taught um, on how to um, and pick data from different sources, be it Excel, MySQL, or went in the website. And we did um, a bit of, um, well, I said clean up, we didn't really clean up, but it just does how to delete rules from data, like when you go through your data set and you see some columns or rules that are not useful, how to delete them. Yes, and we're given assignment or we're told to work on our project based on what we did in class. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, so last week it was more or less like an introduction class to Power BI and what we can do in Power BI. And today we're going to continue from where we stopped. Today we're going to be looking at data transformation. Please let me bring up my slide. Okay. Yeah, please, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so today we're going to be looking at cleaning and transforming data. Um, When you hear cleaning and transforming data, what comes to mind? Guys, we're going to be interacting in this class. It's going to be more of interactive section. I need your inputs. So that it will be more fun. No answer is wrong. No answer is silly. It's just a way of learning. So the more you interact, the better you become. So when you say cleaning and transforming data, can somebody just give us an idea what it looks like? What is what it means? Okay, hello. Yes, good yeah, evening. Data. Good Clean evening. Data actually means um, removing unwanted items or items are no useful from the data, mm -hmm. then transforming it into um, a, a, a um, data, transforming to a form that will be useful or transforming to information. Yeah, exactly. You have said it all, just like the name. It's just something that every data set most, in fact, almost, let's say, 99, let me be fair, 95% of data sets that we work with will most likely have some, some cleaning to be done on it, some transformation to be done on it. And part of it could be because of human error. You know, when you're typing something, you're not perfect. If you type in somebody's name and you mistakenly put maybe a number, so instead of having trauma, you're having trauma one. It's a mistake. I mean, it's 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 something you as a data analyst, you don't have to look out for those things. You find out that um, sometimes you might have outliers. And if you don't take care of that outlier, depending on what you want to find out, if you don't take care of it, it might affect the whole data if, um, analysis they're going to do. So basically, cleaning and transforming data simply means Looking at our data sets, being able to transform it, clean it up, clean up anything that you don't want to be there, you know, transform it in the way you want it to be, and then be able to now make use of it. So for this class, sorry, I don't know what my slide is not moving. Okay. So for this class, we are going to cover the different data types we have. We're going to look at column properties in Power Query. We're going to do some transformation and cleaning. 
that's basically what we're going to do for today. And it's going to be more of hands on. So I hope you guys are ready. Now, why do you need to clean data? Why do you think it's important? Why not if I get a data, I'll just go ahead and then start working on it. So this is the reason why you need to clean the data. There are something we call measures in Power BI. And there are also columns. Of course, you know your rules and your columns. Now, in Power BI, there are some times you might need to carry out some calculations. Okay. Now, if your data set is not well cleaned, it's going to affect your calculations. I'll give you very, a very simple example. Let's say, for example, we are looking at student IDs. Okay. And student IDs most times are very unique to each student. That means you can have more than one person, more than two people having the same unique number. It's always like a student must have a particular number and no other person can have that number. Now, a student ID could come in as 212. That's a student ID. It could be 200, depending on whatever they're using to do their numbering and their student ID. So let's say, for example, if we say the student ID for, let's say, Fumi is 200, for Peter is 201, like that. In our data sets, you have it labeled as maybe student ID, and then under it, you have 200, 201, 202, 203. Now, you have to take care of that. If you leave it as a number, this, I'm talking about data type now. If you leave it as a number, Power BI is going to recognize it as a number, and it might even go ahead to do a summation for you. Now, imagine adding 200 plus 201 plus 202 and the rest. And then you're getting maybe, let's say, 1 million, 300 and this. What's that? I mean, it makes no sense. It's not what we're looking out for. So it's, it's now your duty as a data analyst to make sure that little things like that, you take care of it by doing the needful. Another thing that makes our data set, why we need to clean our data set is to help us have an organized table. So imagine a data set that is just um, data looking anyhow, some um, some empty, some showing errors, some showing this thing. By the time, just looking at it, you as a person, if you look at it, looking at the table, it, 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 won't, look, it, it won't look good at all. So you want to make sure that you first of all clean up all those things so that at the end of the day, your data is looking very organized. You're not seeing cells that have no, you're not seeing cells that are just empty and no explanation for that. Now, there are some times you might find out that a particular data set has some duplicates, right? If that data set, you continue to work with duplicates, duplicate means, let's say, for example, we're going to do this in this case, you have um, Choma Okapo as a student. It's 200, like that, 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 that. Now, it's possible that you can have another Choma Okapo but with a different student ID. Now, it doesn't mean that we're the same person. Yes, we have the same name, but not the same student ID. Invariably, it means that we are two different persons. But there's, uh, there are some cases you might see Choma Okafo, female, student ID 200, maybe score, say, 100%. And then you still see that same Choma Okafo, student ID 200, female, 100% as a score. It's still the same person that I'm referring to. It's just that for some reasons, it has occurred more than once. It will occur up to two times, three times, and everything. Now, imagine going ahead to use that data set without removing those duplicates. It's not going to be good. Because if, for example, you want to find the total number of students you have in that class, and I have 30 students, but because Choma Okafo is occurring more than once, let's say, for example, it has occurred three times in different rows, what it means, by the time I'm looking at the total number of students in that class, I'm going to be getting 33 students instead of 30. And that's a wrong information, and you don't want that happening. Now, there are times, another thing that you want to look at when you're, why we need to clean our data is a complicated column can be split into two. So there are times you might look at a column. Okay, let me even still use students again. We have in the class, we have Choma Okafo, we have Peter Eze, we have Fumilayo, lower tosin like that. Now, for some reasons, I just want to a data set that speaks to just their first name. 
I'm not interested in their last name. I'm not interested in their middle names and every other thing. Probably I can help you just bring out just their first names and leave it on a column for you. So this is part of what we can also achieve when we are transforming our data. Hello? I hope you can still hear me. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay. And then finally, again, when we're dealing with false integer, you need to look at that. So just like the example I gave you initially when they are talking about codes. Now, if, if you don't take time, most times codes come as numbers. It doesn't mean that in that case it's an integer. It's coming in as a code. Let's even give an example. If you are saying street name, street name, um, a street name might be 16, um, Justina Road, you know. That 16 is a number. But in this case, it's, you can't refer to it as an integer because they're not going to be doing any summation on it. It's simply just a code or, you know, it's just, it's just there as a code, not necessarily as a number. So having said that, there are so many, but these are like summarized reasons why we need to clean up our data and transform it so that at the time we are doing our analysis, we are sure we are getting the accurate results. We are sure we are getting the information we want to actually extrapolate from that data set. And not by the time you leave all, if you leave your data, data you leave it not well cleaned. By the time you are getting it from it, will give you a different thing. And then you are marching up to your manager and you telling your manager, actually, we have booked at this. We have so, so, so number of students. We have this one and we have a total score of this. And then your manager is looking at you like, what is this person saying? Already, maybe he already has some information about what you're talking about. And then he knows that you can't have 50 students. Meanwhile, what number of students are enrolled at that time? You're saying 50. How come? So these are things that you want to be sure you're looking at when you're dealing with power your data sets and then the cleaning up and everything. Now in Power BI, there's a, we have a tool that is called the Power Query. You know, some people refer to it as pitching of Power BI. That's where you do your cleaning, that is where you do your transformation, you know. Last week we looked, we actually had, some, we actually brought it up. Whenever you want to clean, most times you have to go back to your Power Query to do that. Although there are sometimes you might just do that on your Power BI, you are good to go. But in most cases, majority of transformation cleaning takes place in the Power Query. That's basically what our Power Query. So if you intend to write this exam at the end of the day, you might see a question come up like this. And one of the questions might be, um, what is the tool that Power BI uses for cleaning and transforming? Just know that it's Power Query. Now, what can we do when we say transforming data? What are those things that we can do by transforming data? One of it means, one of them, it's renaming your query. So you could have a data set, it already has a particular name, it came in with. You have the opportunity to rename it to become something you want it to be. Let's say, for example, um, we've given you um, students' data, let's say um, ABC is to school. But by the time you are doing the analysis, maybe for some reasons they don't want it remaining as ABC. You want to be sure you are changing the name and you can do that in under your transform data. Another thing is renaming your columns, removing rows and I did we did some of this, I think with columns, removing rows last week, but we're still gonna repeat it again this week. And then for sometimes you might want to remove rows with filters. So there are times maybe you're giving a data set and your, your MD is like, oh, I just want you to analyze data set for people in so 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 departments, right? Let's say you have up to four departments. You have the marketing, you have the HR, you have the finance, and let's, um, what's the other one? Whatever. But your, 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 your manager is just interested in maybe data, um, analyzing data set for just people in finance departments. You can do that because you don't need to bring in all the whole data sets and be working with all of them. Even if you've brought in everything, you can just filter it down to the particular one you're looking out for. It makes the work easier. It makes the whole thing better for you instead of having to go through all of them. You can do that in, in transforming data. Then when I've talked about duplicates, you can do that. You can also match columns. You can replace values. All these things we are going to do it today. 
So let's just continue. I can't wait to get to the power BI part. Of it. I'm just trying to do like an intro. And then we have our data types. In Power BI, let me to move this. In Power BI, we have different data types. I just did a screen grab and got it here. We have the decimal number, we have the fixed, sorry, fixed decimal number, we have full number, percentage, date and time, date, date, date time, time zone, duration, text, true false, and binary. These are the different data types we have in Power BI. By the time we start working on our data sets, you will now appreciate it better when you have to. So if you are talking about time, you don't want it to be coming up as just number. You have to make probably understand that this is not just a number, it's a time. This is a date. This is a text. This is decimal. This is decimal. This is a whole number. I want you to give, in, give me the, just like when, we, when you're talking about students grades, you want it to be in percentage. You need to do that and tell probably, okay, here's this data type is a percentage. Please give it to me in percentage and it will do that for you. Having said that, we will now move over to our Power BI. Um, I dropped um, like two folders and one file on our channel. I don't know if you guys saw it because I was looking at the data set we already had and it wasn't really dirty. So I kind of tried to tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit dirty so that by the time we're working on it, I can appreciate it more. I don't know if you saw that so that you can download it as we are working on this. However, if you're not able to do that now, you can do it after the class, but so that you can use it for your practice. The first folder is- I'm sorry, um, is it the sales? Yeah, you know, last week we uploaded sales, which is what we are working with for this data, for this class. But because the sales is not so dirty, I kind of worked on it and then I named it sales, I think sales dirty. Dirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then there's another one, the append query, and then the more queries. Um, I, I didn't see it, please. Can you where exactly it was, please? I'm coming. It's on our file. It's on our file. It's on our file. Yeah, exactly. Um, let me see if I can share my share. Okay. Yeah, so if you go to files, When you go to files, yeah, that's it. Append queries, match queries, and yeah, sales copy three data. Those are the three data that we're going to additional data sets we're going to be working with today. So, without wasting much of our time, they're going to guide me on how to. Bring in my data sets. We did that last week. So you just be through, guide me kind of. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Any questions? You open your Power BI desktop and you click on. Okay, okay. You want to guide me, right? One minute, yes, please, though. Um, I'm trying to thank you so much for volunteering. Trying to bring on my father, yeah, I thought it was on before. I don't know how it got here. Well, any questions so far? Any questions? Anything that needs for that clarification before we can continue? I 
تکان نشان از بیمانست Okay. Yeah. Thank you. When you launch your Power BI desktop, like you just did, to so click okay. Get Data, there are about two or three ways of doing this. If you go up mm -hmm. under your inserts, you will see Get Data. Or you see those add. Under my inserts? And you will see Get Data on top. Just click Get From Data. From where? Inserts? From home. You said under From my home. home. From home. Okay. From yeah. home, but it's like I just sent okay. insert when you are looking at it from the desktop. You click get yeah. data and depend on the kind of data, but because you are working on Excel on this class, you click Excel workbook and you go to wherever you save your data. You know, you downloaded the file from our our team. So wherever you save it, like me, I created a folder, call it text Tyler, and I'm that's why I'm keeping my so you go there. And you pick where you pick your your doc your Excel that you are working with your data set in this content now. So when you, you double click it and you give the system some time to bring it up, is is the system will bring it up. When you bring it up, you will see the list of the sheets on this your uh, data set. Like in our content now, we have table one and stock data, the one we used last week. Then you are this is what happened to me while I was practicing. On Thursday, okay. I didn't see my, I could not see preview because why? I didn't check the button beside. I even sent didn't click on it, right? Yes, I didn't check okay. it. Okay, so, I think I saw your, sorry we didn't reply immediately. But I, but thank God, God I was able to get also it. I didn't exactly. leave the desk until I got it right. Yeah, so you check exactly. it, That's then you can see the content. And we are asked at this point to click transform data. Transform data, and that will take us to the BI uh, two kitchen where you can now clean your data. Thank you, ma. Awesome. awesome. Ah, Yinka, oh, please provide ten thousand for this lady. <laughs> okay. So, oh, I love that. So, I'm going to. I don't know who's going to. Is that for me? Yes, it's for so, me. For me, we have a lot of for me on this okay. platform. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um based on what you have said so far, thank you so much. Now I just wanted to bring something to our notice. So on our navigator plane, we can see we have two of these showing. Now if I look at this, this I'm looking at table one now. Order ID, order date, unit price, price, quantity, and the rest. If I click on this, it's still the same thing. Still the same thing. The only difference is the same data set that you're bringing in. The only difference is that this is coming in as a table and this is not coming in as a table. Whichever one you pick, it's fine. However, you might want to go for table. What table does is that it will do some, you know, it already recognizes the table, so it will just do some cleaning for us and then. It's not that it's not like you really do, but you like it. Okay, let me let me, let's let's do a practical now. So I'm going to bring in this now. Let me start with this. I'll bring in this. I'm still going to take it off. Sorry, let me start with this because I want to work with this one. I'll bring in this, the table now, and then I'm going to go and click on transform data. Mm -hmm. Now, ah, uh, okay, it's coming up. So it's in now. It's in now. Now, notice that if you go through this, these are my different um, different data attributes. We have the other ID, other dates, units, course, and the rest up to the very last, which is um, zone. Okay, that's for this. I still want to bring in the other one, but we'll eventually work with one. Um, the other time we went through Power BI, I'll just go through this now. Save us time. So that I just wanted us to say something. Yeah. So I'm going to bring in this now. 
sales. I'm going to say okay. Why can't I see transform load again here? It just came up as okay and cancel. Why is that so? Anybody? Any ideas? I think I was very fast. I should have waited. When I clicked on. Yes, you, it was fast. It's possible to go over it again. It didn't quite grab. Uh, okay. So. You saw, so I want to bring in my data set again. And that's it there. And I click on open. My navigator plane is open again. And I'm bringing in sales. Okay. The, the first I, time it was tables that you checked, right? Yeah, the first, okay, no. The first one was yes. table. The second one was sales. This is the third time I'm doing it again. Yeah, so my question is this. Looking at our navigator pane now, it's just showing me okay and cancel. But when I brought in table the first time, it was showing me um, load, transform, and what's the other one, cancel. So why is it like this? Any ideas? Um, yes, it's because you already yeah. have the data. No, well, not really. Not really. Any other person try? So, is it because, it because you, it? you pulled it from new source instead of um, yeah, data? Yeah, close to the answer. Instead of what? Instead of um, what? Data. Yeah, close to the answer. Very close. But I needed to use the right terms. Yes, I put it from new source this time around instead of get data like I did for table one. Or you are very close to the answer. In fact, you have answered it, but I just want you to use the right term. So why it's like that is this. When we did our get data, we were on Power BI platform, like the Power BI and Power M, um, interface. But this time around, we're already in the Power Query. Remember, you do your transformation in your Power Query, right? So we were telling Power BI, Okay, get me this data. I don't want you to load it direct to Power BI. I want you to transform it for me. And Power BI, like I told you people, the transformation um, where you do your data transforming in Power BI is in the Power Query. So by the time you click on transform, Power BI knows you want to take that data first to Power Query to clean it up. But this time around, I'm already here. I'm already here. I think it's slow. Yeah. 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 Okay, the first time we went through get data and we got in this sales and we came up like this and we chose table one and then we had load transform cancel. Now, when we were bringing in this data, we started from Power BI, but we don't want to load it directly to Power BI, I want to transform. And once we click on transform, Power BI understands that you want to go and clean it up kind of. And the tool that does that for Power BI is the Power Query. So it's going to take us to the power query, okay? And that's why we have the load transform and okay. But this time around, we want to bring in our data from, or we're already on power query and we want to bring in our data from power query. So you just go to your new source, click on the data source, that you, the data that you want to bring in and just click okay. And this will just bring it in. Because we're selecting sales and then, there's no need for low transform and all those things again because we're already in power query. So just tell it okay. And then it should bring it in for us. Yeah. So you remember when we looked at this? 
started from other ID and then stopped at zone. Now for sales, I told you these two data sets are the same, but the only difference is that one is a table and the other one is not a table. Now, just take a look. Can you see that it started from other ID and we're having our last column to be column 20. Like it brought in an extra column that we had on the data sets. But already table, the, the table already recognizes, okay, this is a table that starts from other ID and it ended in zone. Now, if the initial data set that we had, had other, like you had other columns that was added to the data sets, Power BI, if you just select it and don't like take up the table, it will still bring out those, those columns. It might even be seen like one, two, three columns that will just have no, 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 no. That's it. So that is not the difference between bringing in table and sales. I don't know if that explanation is clear. No, Otherwise, I didn't get that explanation. Please, can you go over it again? Not clear. Okay. So this is our table. The first column we have here is other ID, other day, just like that. So you get to the last column. And the last column is zone. Okay. Now, when you go to your sales, the first column we have on sales is other ID, just like the table, other date, unit cost, down to the last column. Now, instead of zone being the last, we have column 20. And that's because wherever we are bringing the data set for, for some reasons, maybe when you were doing your table, you had extra columns that was there. But Power BI is just bringing in everything for you. But if you select the table option, Power BI will automatically know that, okay, this last column, there's nothing there. So we don't even need it because if I go through it now to the very last, it's just going to be no, 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 no. In some cases, depending on the extra columns you have, you might even have this occurring more than once. I have it like column 20, no, 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 column 21, well, no, no, column 22, no, 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 right? So basically, the difference between the table and then bringing in the table and the one that's not the table is that the table automatically take off all this one because this data set is irrelevant to us. It's empty and we don't need it. So it will automatically do that for you and that's it. That's the only difference between the two. Otherwise, anyone you bring in, it's fine. Just that you do more cleaning when you bring in the one that's not a table. Is it clear now? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. So for the sake of this class, I will go with the sales because I want to do cleaning. So I will just take this one out. I don't need it anymore. Let's take it out. Let's go. Thank you. So now we have our data set in our Power Query and we need to do some cleaning. So when you have a data set, once you have your data set and it's in, you want to go through the data set to be sure that everything is okay. So just like we discussed, I'm going to start with data types. Remember that I told you people that we have different data types in Power BI. This is where we have our data type. If I drop this down, you see the different data types we have in Power BI. We have the decimal number, we have the fixed decimal number, whole number, percentage, date, time, date, and so on and so forth. Now, looking at our very first column, which is this, for you to know the data type up here, you just go to this small column that we have, icon that we have here, and you have one, two, three. It's telling me that, oh, this is a whole number. It's seeing this column as a whole number. That's the icon, one, two, three, whole number. It's seeing this column as a whole number. And remember that this is an other ID. And by default, other ID is not a number. Some people might decide to leave it like this. But what it means is that you have to be extra careful when you go further and remember, and always remember that this is not a number column. But to play safe, we always advise that since it's not a number column, so that Power BI will not go and be seeing it as a column that has numbers and be thinking that you can do summation on it. The best thing to do to play safe is just to take it out as, instead of being a number, you can label it as a text. 
automatically automatically power bi now recognizes that this is not a column where we can do summation or any arithmetical or you know operation on it okay so we have just succeeded in changing this from number to text this is just one way of doing it you go to the icon select what you want to select and automatically it will do that for you now if you come to this second one you can see that it's different from what we had here this one was this one or rather what we have here now this is abc initially we had one two three so whenever you see abc automatically you know that we are talking about sex here when you see one two three we are talking about numbers in this case now what we have here is the date icon now you look at the data set is this what we want is this a date yes it's an other date so this is okay this is fine so i don't have a problem with this we come over to the next one this is unit cost cost is talking about numbers and in some cases, it might not be a whole number. It could be something point one. Looking at our data set, already it's point something. So that's why you have 1.2. The same for price, the same for other quantities. So for other quantity, we have a whole number because maybe if you're ordering, um, let's say, a place order for say like, um, it depends well, depends on the product. If it's a phone, then you should expect it should be a whole number. You can't get 4.5 or four and a half phones. So in that case, it should be a number, a whole number. So you just continue like that to check for all your columns. In this case, we have number, um, text, this is fine, text, this is fine, text, this is fine. And I hope we still have another one. These are all fine. These are all texts. These are all texts. These are all texts. Mm -hmm. It is good now. If we don't take time, it's showing us um, as a number. For some people, they are okay with it. They can leave it as a number, but you might want to be care. You might want to change this from number and give it another data type. Now, if you want, as we want to change it, you don't want to change it from here. You can come to this side, it's showing you as a whole number. You can change it. Okay, I don't want you to show me as text. Show me as something else. Let's say show me this as a text so that probably i will not think i'm doing a calculation on this and it will just do that for you so there are so many ways of doing something in power bi or power query you can either decide to change it from here or you can go to all the steps that we have here and select the one that matches what you want to do and that's how you continue doing it until the very last column and if everything is fine then we are good to go this is a text, this is a text, this is a text. In this case, we're having it, we're seeing it as a text and as a number. And that's because, of course, this place is even empty. So Power BI is just leaving it as text or number, whichever that's used, it's okay. Now, we are done with data types. Just like I said, there are different ways you can achieve that. You can either do it directly from here, or you can go to your tab or your home tab, get your data types and do it from here. Now, another thing which I think we did part of it last week is moving columns. Looking at this column now, it's very irrelevant in this. I don't need it. It's, it's, it's not going to help me in any way. So what I'm going to do is to take it off. But before I can take it off, there is something we'll call column properties. Now, look at this now. Look at this. Notice that this line here is green. And then this line here is it's not green. I mean. Every other line here is green, but this line is not green. What it means is that we have empty cells here. If I place my cursor on it, you find that it's giving me zero value. It's empty. Everything is empty. There's nothing here. But if I place it here now, it's going to tell me that we have 1,000 value, no problem. There's no error. If there's an error, we're going to see small red. Let's say there's, let's say, 10% error. You're going to see small red here on this your green line. But because everything is valid, that's why we're seeing green all through. And then, of course, if it's empty, you're going to see something like this, telling you, oh, we have some empty cells. That's one way of also looking at your cleaning. So looking at everything we have here, of course, like I said, this data was almost as good as clean. So that's it.
But going back to what I wanted to say, if we want to remove Kolom now, we did this last week. There are, just like I said, there are different ways of achieving something. You can decide to just right click on it and say, remove columns. Sorry, in this case, remove column because it's just one. If, for example, um, I just want to work with maybe let's say one, two, three, one. If you want to select more than one, um, more than one column and maybe that together, you can just press on your shift key and move with it and it will select it for you. Now, if I wanted to just leave these three columns and then remove every other column here, all I need to do is select the columns I want to leave and I can say remove other columns and it will just remove every other column that I have here. But in this case now, I just want to remove only this column. So all I need to do is just to say, is just to right click and say remove column. I need to do that for me. If I don't want to do it from here, I can still go to this top place. You go to your home and look for remove columns. And then it's going to ask you, is it just that column or do you want to remove all other columns and leave that one? In this case, I just want to remove this column. So I'll just click on it and say remove the column for me and it does that. Now, another beautiful thing about Power BI is that for everything, sorry, Power Query, is that for everything you do in your Power Query, you will see all the steps that you have taken on this side, and we refer to that as the apply steps. Okay, everything that we are doing here, it will be showing you here. So let's say, for example, I have removed columns, and I'm not sure um, what I did. I can just come here and look at all this person. Maybe let me say you're not, the, you're not even the one that worked on it. Or you are now the one in charge of the data set. You want to know, okay, what I want did this person do when the person was doing the cleaning and transformation? Just come to this place and then you see everything that has been done. In some cases, if there was a mistake that was done at a particular step, you can correct that from here. Hopefully, we'll do that. Having done the removing column, likewise, that's the way you also remove your rules. In this case, I don't think um, you can work on that. As I mean, I wanted to remove, okay, let's even do that. As I mean, I wanted to remove this first row now. Okay. Maybe for some reasons, I don't need it in this data, in this data analysis and everything. All you need to do, just like we did the other time, you click on the row you want. Sorry. You go to your, um, what do you call it? Remove rows. Sorry. I'm trying to say. You go to this point. Yeah. You go to this point and it will tell you, you will see where you have remove top rules, remove bottom rules, remove um, alternate rules. Now, for some time, there are sometimes you might bring in a data set into Power BI. And I don't know if I have a data set, I can even show that. And for some reasons, I don't want this first column to be there because I don't need it. All I need to do is I can come to this place and tell Power BI, please, I need you to remove that first top row. Just remove it for me. I can come to this place and say, remove top rows. And then it brings out, it comes out this tape, this, this um, thing. And then it's asking you how many rows do you want to remove from the top. If I want to remove more than one or two or three, I can indicate it here. But in this case, I just want to, okay, let's say two. I just want to remove the first two rows. If I click, if I type into and say, okay, it will just go ahead and remove that first two rows and you can't find it again, it's off, it's off. If I go back to this now, this step that I did before, you'll find out that what we had in the first two rows, we had 70, 77 and 117. But because we have done this, we have removed two top rows, they are off. So it's just starting from the third one now, which is 70, 18 and so on and so forth. Now, if, for example, in Power BI, you've done a mistake, I'm not supposed to remove those first two rows, but have, for some reason, I don't know, I mistakenly removed it. You can still get it back. You don't have a problem. All you need to do, just go back and cancel this step that you have just applied, and then your data set is back. So that's another way of removing, that's one way of removing your rules. You can also decide to remove alternate rules. Alternate rules simply means remove this one, Keep this one, remove this one, keep this one like that for bottom rows. These are the two things you can do in removing rows, or rather, three things you can do in removing rows. 
Now, another thing we can do in Power BI is to also look at your names, the names of your column. There are sometimes you might have a data set and the, colo the, 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 the data, the, the column names doesn't really make sense or it's not friendly. You want to be, um, you want to be giving names that even if you're not the one analyzing that data, if somebody comes in, the person understand that this is unique. Because imagine coming and, and, and I'm seeing, and I'm seeing just costs. Oh, okay. If I even look at the data set, it might make some sense. But imagine just seeing, um, let's just see, we are seeing AB. What's AB? Maybe if you now ask the owner of the data set, the person answered, oh, AB is a unit cost. And then you leave it like this, and then some other person comes to work on it, and the person is seeing AB. Would it make any sense to the person? No. So you also want to be sure that when you're looking at the column names, that anybody that picks up that data set and is working on it, it makes sense. So assuming we have something like this, and you have called your customer, and you're like, I'm surface, I don't know, I'm seeing AB, what's this? The person can tell you, okay, oh, that's our unique cause. All you need to do, just double click on that name, and then delete it and just type what you want it to be there. That's how to rename your columns. Very simple, Too much. And then click outside. Voila, it has done the work for you. Now, we have other quantities. Every other thing is correct. I know I changed something here. Everything, every other thing is correct for the states. Um, for some reason, when the, whoever that was typing this data set, when the person was imputing it, the person, instead of writing state, the person now wrote, States, right? You know it's wrong and you know it's not supposed to be that. You can go ahead and just correct it. And all you need to do is just double click on it and then type. Or you can even say rename. And it will rename it for you. Let me do that. I think I should do that. Okay. So I can right click on that column and look for where it says rename. And then type what I want to be there. I want it to be state, please. After that, click outside, and then it renames it for you. So these are little, little things you can do that at the end of the day, the data set is making more sense. Now, the beautiful thing about query power, query power here yeah, is that while you are doing this, is actually writing formulas. It's actually coming up with programming. Um, it's actually doing some programming behind. But because Spark BI is kind of user-friendly, you don't need to know all those codes and everything. It is just doing it. If you look at this now, it's saying, okay, this state was changed to state. If it's somebody that is writing, in, let's say Python and the rest, these are the things you impute for your data set to understand what you're doing. But the beautiful thing about using this tool is that you don't need to do all those things. Just as you're doing it, it will be doing behind the scene, just doing it for you. Now, if you look at this, are you guys still with me? I hope I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> yes, we are with you. Yes, we are with you. you. Yes, we are with you. Awesome. Awesome. Now, looking at this state now, this column now, we have just achieved the naming our columns, right? Now, looking at this column now, I can see that I have emo. I have emo 444, which is emo 444. Perhaps whoever that was typing this also made another mistake as usual. And instead of having emo, I'm seeing emo 444. Now, somebody will ask me if we have so many things here, assuming this emo 444 is down, 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 how do I say this? Another beautiful way of making life so easy for you. There's something we we'll call filters in um, Power BI. Just go to this, if you can see this drop down icon here, drop it down. It gives you the different data sets we have here. So looking at this, I can say, okay, we have other states, Abuja, Adamawa, Afaibon, this, 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 this. And that's fine, but let's go down to that emo. Can you see it's recognizing emo and it's also recognizing that emo 444 as a different state. Meanwhile, this emo 444 is the same as emo state. But for some type of error, it's not, of course, Power BI is not so intelligent to know that, okay, emo 444 is not the same thing as, is, is the same thing as emo state. So a very quick way to see, okay, hey, maybe something is not so right. How do I see all the details, all the, all the, all the um, um, values or characters or whatever under my column, just drop click on that drop down menu, and then you will see like just a quick glance of what you are looking out for. And looking at this now, I know that ah, this emo 444 is not working out at all. 
So all I need to do, I can come here, go to this particular place. It's a very simple and lazy way of doing to it. Go to this place and just right click on it and say replace value. Taking forever to come. Okay, yeah. So the when you right click on that word, it will automatically give you the value you want to replace. Because I'm right clicking on that particular place, I want it to correct. That's why it has given me this. But if I just go to that column, I know, okay, this column has some fault. I want it to replace Imo 444. You can just come on it and say replace value. Now uh, that's the difference between clicking on where you had the error and just clicking on the column. It's now your duty to now go and put Imo 444 and then place it with Imo. How will be I will go and look for email for, for, for wherever you have it on this. If you have it more than once, if you had it more than if you have it according to me, like say five times, just go and correct it and give it to you as email. Now, this is okay, good to go. So probably other knows that that was an error and it just you wanted to type email on that document. Now that is one way of replacing values. You can also replace, it can be number, it can be anything. Let's say Maybe um, um, a particular number, let's say this number now. Your MD have told you, oh, no, 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 that number is very wrong. You need it to be to start. So, very simple. No problem. Just go on that system and replace it with whatever you want it to be replaced with. Very simple. That's all. Now, another thing we can do in trans cleaning and trans data transform is. There's something we'll call using fresh row as headers and using headers as fresh row. I'm going to start with using headers as fresh row for some reason. Now, this is our header here. This, the store name, store zip code, space, and so on and so forth. That's our header. This is our first row, second row, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't want this, my header, to be my header anymore. I want it to be my first row. Can I achieve that in Power BI? Yes. How do I do that? Just go to your home. Look for this man called use fresh row as headers. The other way around, use headers as fresh row. Once I click on it, probably I say, okay, oh, voila. Okay. Now, notice that my First row now is now my initial header. Then automatically, probably I said, okay, this is column one, column two. Perhaps I now want to rename this column and call it whatever I want to give it now. You have the opportunity. Remember how to rename, just double click and then type. But assuming I bring in this data set and it's looking like this, looking at this data set, obviously I already know that this should be my header, not my first row. Other ID, other dates, unit calls, price, and so on. It should be my header, not my first row. How can I rectify this? All you need to do, you can either decide to go to your home and come and look for this man here, or you can still come from this place, the icon that is just at the edge, and then say, please, oh, how be I use first row as my headers? Then it does that for you. Voila, we are back to where we are. Which is what we want. So these are little, little, little things you can do in Power BI. And okay. And for some reasons, you are sure that you are getting your data set the way you want it. Now there is this option of combining two forms. Let me look for something. So we have what we call. In, in Power BI, we call it merging columns. This is a column. This is a column. Now, I can decide to merge this column so that it now becomes store, new year promotion, store, new year promotion, online, Amazon promotion. Power BI will say, okay, oh, it's very, very possible to do this. Let me recall how to do this. You can right click and say, Power BI, please match these columns for me. Just select the columns you want it to match and then say, match columns for me. Now, Power BI is kind of smart. 
it will ask you, okay, you want me to match this colon, no problem. But do you want any separator as I'm matching the columns? If you don't want anything, if you leave it as known, if you just come and match the two of them, there will be no space between the store and new year promotion. But no, I want I want something in between. I don't want to imagine everything. You can decide to use colon. You can decide to use comma. Anything. For sure, decide for Power BI. And it's not Power BI that would do that decision for you. So I can say, okay, give it space, please. Oh. Just give it space. And then if I match it, I don't want it um, showing me as matched as the name of the colon. Maybe just say that um, the name should not be um, channel. Channel, channel, um, let us say channel, and let us leave it as channel, like that. Then it's okay. Now, I will just go and match those two, these things. So, remember when we had those two columns, let me go back to the initial here. When we had those two columns, we had so online and so on on our channel. And then under the promotion name, we had new year promotion, new year promotion, so on and so forth. But because it has matched the two, you will not see so new year promotion. Now, remember we said let the separator be space, and that's why we have space here. Assuming we said let the separator be column, you see the column here. We say, Let's see, whatever you tell it to be the separator, you see here. And probably are successfully matched these two columns, and that is what we are seeing. So let's say, for example, you are given a data set that has first name and last name. You don't want it occurring as first name and last name. You just want it to be name. You can use this match columns to do that. But what if, in this case now, I, I know that this, this, this store is the channel name, and this was the particular promotion we did. Was when we're doing our new year promotion and looking at it now channels for new year it doesn't really like it doesn't give details of our data i want to split this column please so that it makes more sense so that yes yeah, so we did this at the, it was in the store and this was a particular promotion that we did at that particular point in time how do i do it just go to that column that you want to split and decide to go to your home, home to the split column and say, Power BI, please, so I need you to split this column. Now, on that split, we have different functions. We have by delimiter, we have by number of characters, by position, we have lowercase, and so on and so forth. You can decide to say, okay, by delimiter. If you say by delimiter, Power BI will go ahead and ask you, okay, let me even do it. Power BI will go ahead and ask you, okay, what kind of delimiter? If you say by space, right? If you say by space, Power BI will just go ahead and it will ask you, Okay, which space? Is it the leftmost delimiter? Is it the rightmost delimiter? Is it the each occurrence of the delimiter? Now you have to be very careful here. In this case, now we just want to go back. In this case, now we just want this first. This for like the store to stay alone and every other thing should be okay. If I mistakenly go and click on by delimiter, if I mistakenly Click on each occurrence of the delimiter. Watch what will happen. I say, okay, probably I will just look for all the space. Anywhere I see space, I will just separate it from the other one. You can answer what we are having store, new, yay, promotion. This is not what we want to achieve. Like, this is the opposite of what we want. It's, it's no way close to what we want to achieve. So, you want to be sure that every instruction you are giving Power BI, you are sure of what you are putting in. I don't want this. I can decide to just cancel this. Or you can decide to merge it back. Or for, for the sake of time, I will just cancel it. Mm -hmm. We're back. So I want Power BI to just bring out this, these ones that I added. Remember, I added the words that were here together with the other chain column, the New Year promotion, and the rest. So I'll just start Power BI. Please separate this for me. Click on the column you want to split. Go to your drop down menu, click on by delimiter, and then tell it left most. In this case, it's our left most. Assuming it was the right most, if you click the right most, it will just come up with the words that you will see, the first words you see on your right, and then space, every other thing, it will push it to one column. 
but in this case, I want Latmos. I'm going to the upper Beatrice Latmos. Okay. That's what we from it. So we have what we had initially. Channel point one, channel point two. We have our stores here showing now. We have the new year promotion, the different types of promotion here. So remember what we had initially was channel, the name of the this one was channel, and then this one uh, showing channel two. We had um promotion name. Go ahead and then gotta put the name. Yes. That's it. We are good to go. Now another thing we can do in transforming. We are, I think we're almost done. But we have what we call the match queries and append queries. I didn't create that slide before we came here. Now when you say let me put up that slide and see. Um, when you say match queries, when when is it important? When do you need to do this? Let's say, for example, employee database. We have our employees and um, information. Let's say their name, their their sex, their um, what's the name again? Date of birth. Just basic information about them and be in one particular table. Now, maybe for HR departments, you now have maybe the number of times they've been to work, the amount they're being paid, maybe their rank and every other thing. Most times you might find out that you have like a unique ID that works for different staff members. So every staff member have their own ID. Now, when we're talking about, let's say staff 001, Maybe that could be um, Fumi. Fumi is having the staff ID 001 and on a particular data set, on a that particular table where we have personal information about Fumi, we will have every information that has to do with her personal details. But then again, if we go to another database, we'll still see 001, which is Fumi's ID. And then we might have other information about Fumi, maybe the kind of work she's doing, how much she's being paid, and so on and so forth. Now, I want to do analysis, and they're telling me I can get information from Fumi from table A and also from table B. It's even possible that they're not even the same source. Maybe one is in SQL database, the other one is in Excel. Can you be able to match these two tables and still work with it? Yes. All you need to do is go to and that, okay, I'm trying to explain append queries and match queries. So basically what matching queries will do for you, just like matching columns, it will just go and bring that table from the other side, bring the other table, put it together, and it becomes one table that you can now work with. That means you will have more columns now to work with. That is for your match queries. Now, appending means adding more rows to your table. Let's say, for example, we have 100 employees in our database. But for some reasons, whoever that did the data collection had like one, the first 50 on a particular table. And it was, the data is located in, let's say, in Excel. And then for some reasons, the remaining 50, the other 50 persons, their data is in the XV file. But my employer wants me to match like in that company. Now, what I need to do is just to go and get the first 50 persons data and bring the other last 50 persons data and append the two right there. Because of course, um, for the first day, I might have name and um, occupation, um, date of birth, kiniko, kiniko, for the first 50. And I also have the same for the other 50. All I need to do is just to append the two, and I'll be able to do my, my work. I don't know. I hope this is clear. So basically, appending means I have two tables. Okay? And uh, another thing that is very important, when you are doing your appending, please, please, check and make sure that your columns... 
Yes, Mama, Hello? we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So, simply means. Okay, please, I think you guys need to mute yourselves so that I don't keep recording. So, basically, append, append means. Okay, sorry, I wanted to say something before I was distracted. When you are using append queries, you want to be sure that your colon names. I say colon names, let me go back to my data set. You want to be sure that your colon names are Italian. So maybe the person that was, okay, we're going to see it now. We're going to see it now when we're doing a part of it. But you want to be sure that your colon names, you are sure that they are the same, especially if it's the same. So if 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 name is the name of the column, is the name of the column in my previous data set, and I want to combine it with the second table, which has maybe let's say um, names of students or names of employee. Name and names of employee, they're not the same. Power BI does not recognize they're the same. But to you, you know they're the same because it's still the same names of employee and names of. So you want to tell Power BI, please, oh, names and names of employees is the same. So it's either you rename your columns and give one names and give the other names or you give one names of employee and the other one names of employee. Okay, okay. let me just, any question? We're going to work on it now. I just wanted to explain before we start. And after that, we'll be done for this. Hello, Chema. I know we are. Yeah, Gloria. Yeah, Gloria. Yeah, you have some questions yeah, yeah. on the chat box. You have some questions on okay. the chat box. Yeah. Thank you. And, and wants to know um, why the channel is showing channel one, two, three when you reverted. Okay. okay, I think that was when we did our splitting our, of um, columns. So by yeah, when default, you split the columns. Mm, by default, by Power BI default, will try to I like give like, your columns names and recall that when we wanted to split that column, the initial name on that column was just channel. So Power BI just trying to do its thing. It's not giving. Channel one, channel two, channel three, just a default, a random name. It feels, it feels like, okay, you should be able to work with this. But it's not left for you. If that channel one, channel two, of course, if it's not making sense, you want to rename it. And that's why I went ahead to rename it that time. I think, I hope I answered that question, Eno. Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Is it possible to demonstrate the append? Yes, we're going to do that now. Yeah. So, that's it. so we are going to go back to our power query. Um, okay, yeah. So when you are done cleaning in power query, just before we did our append and match queries, I was still going to do that. But once you are done doing your transformation in power query, you now want to load back your data set into your power BI. How can I do that? All you need to do is look at this icon we have here. Where you have close and apply. If you drop this down, close and apply means please go ahead and close my Power Query and apply all the changes I've done on this Power Query in my data set. Apply means just apply. Don't close my Power Query. I still need my Power Query on and I want to work with it. Close means okay, go ahead and close. No need to apply all the changes. Maybe I just realized that. What I've been doing so far is not needed. So I'll just go ahead and then close it. But in most cases, just want to close and apply. And close. So it's going to bring up my Power BI. Yeah, it's adding it now. Then it takes some time. Okay, well, it will keep loading and loading. When it's done, I don't know, my system is so slow today. When it's done, you are going to see your table on your right, under the fields page, where you have your fields. Yeah. Nice. Okay. 
Bon. Oh my god. Okay, so while we're waiting for it, I don't uh, yeah, it's here, it's, it's out. So you can now see our fields data set. Sorry, our sales data set. If you click on this drop um, this arrow, drop down arrow, it will show you all the different color names we had. Remember, or well, in this case now it's doing it alphabetically. Have brand name, channel, city, kiniko, kiniko, and so on now. You will notice that if you look at this, I thought I changed this other ID to text. <laughs> it's okay. Look at this now. It's even fine that I did this. You can see the submission sign. This submission, like I told you guys, Power BI by default, whenever it has this, it means that this particular column is in integers. It's, it's, it has integers as the makeup. It's seen it as numbers. And it's telling you, oh, you can actually add this column. You can actually add this column. You can actually do your summation on this column. That's what it means. But if you look at channels, channels is just a text. And that's why it's not coming up like this. And that's why I say you have to be careful when you're working with other ID, which is not a number, or rather, which is not an integer that you want to sum up. It's just more like um, an ID, a code that you just want to give. So you want to be careful. By the time you are doing any summation for any reason, you don't go and start summing up the other IDs. I don't know. I thought I changed it. I don't know how I changed that, but we are still, you can still change it even from Power BI. Let's even do that now. As I mean, remember last week, we talked about the report view, data view, model view. If I go to my data view, I want to look at that other ID. Other ID. It's showing me as a whole number. That means it's changed back to whole number. I don't want it to show me as a whole number. So, like I told you people, most transformation, most data transforming does is takes place in the Power Query. But there are still some that you can do in your Power BI. And this is just one of it. So you click on that column. It's not telling me I'm on this particular column, other ID. What has um, the data type I'm seeing here is whole number. I don't want it to be whole number, please. So that I don't make mistake and then sum it up for me. Change it back to text. I can just select text. And it will just do it. If I, I go back to my I go back to my report view, you find that that summation sign is no more in front of other ID because Power BI is no more recognizing it as integers that they can sum up. So this is just like I said that. Uh, you can also do your transformation in Power BI, and this is just one of those. Now, if you're already in Power BI, and I still want to transform this data, I still want to transform this data, I just noticed that, oh, um, there's some cleaning I didn't do well, or there's something I didn't do right. You can still go back to your transformation, that's your Power Query, from your home button, look for your transform data, click on this drop down in um, arrow, and then click on transform data. And Power BI will say, Take you back to your power query so that you can continue your cleaning, whatever you want to transform. So, having said that, I'm going to bring in the last two data sets that we need the match and app time query. So, I want to bring in another data set that I want to work with. I know that one of the data sets is Excel. Another thing you need to be careful whenever you're dealing with a data set, you want to be sure of the type of data set you're working with, whether it's an Excel, there's we file. We're going to look at something. I'm not sure. I can't remember. So the normal thing to do is to go back to the data source and find out if it's Excel, CSV, or whatever. But let's even assume it's an Excel file that I want to bring in. Now, what I want to bring in is my first name again. What I want to bring in is my match queries. That is good. Yeah. I have this. I want to bring in this data set. I want to bring in, I uploaded this to actually, it's there, and that much queries folder. I want to bring in this data set. In this case, I have two different data sets. I'm going to bring it one by one. I'll click on open. So it was able to recognize that it's an Excel file because it's an Excel file. 
I'll still show us by the time we get to, I think it's the appendix CSV. So you can go ahead and bring it in. So just like I told you before, you can decide to take this, you can decide to take it. Let me just go ahead um, and take it because you do. Yeah. Oh, sorry, excuse me, ma'am. Can you take it step see. by step? I I got lost after you you made you said um some of the effect you did was not implemented. So you used the data view to implement it. After that, I got lost. Do, do we have to go back to our Power Query editor again to add the new data set we want to merge with this? So I went back to Power Query because I wanted us to show us if um, a way we can go back to Power Query if we're already in Power BI. And okay. Yeah, I think I got um, lost mm -hmm. about the same place when you talked about the different types of, is it the reports before you came back to Power Query? I don't know how you left the data view back to the main. Um, yeah, I'm back. I'm back, I'm back. So this is my no, Power not BI. This place. Okay. No, not this place. Now you clicked on the data okay. view. Okay. And then yeah. it opened the I, I data. Just came back so to after effect. BI. I just came back to Power BI. Now, remember that last week we talked about the different views in Power BI. Yeah. We have the, um, the report view, we have the data view, and we have the, and model, the model view. Model. Yes, can we mute our mic? So, when I wanted to change the other ID, I was showing as a number because we had a summation number. I just, a summation sign in front of it. I just knew that he was seeing it as a number. I went to my data view. I clicked on it. And I clicked on the column that I wanted to work on, which is the other ID. And from my column ID, now it's giving me different information about that column. The name of the column is other ID. The data type is text. Now, assuming I want to change this text and I don't want it to be text anymore, I now want it to be, say, number. I'm just assuming, right? I can drop down this and click on whole number. And it's, it will ask me, will this data change to blah, 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 blah? Yes, go ahead and change it. It's okay. and it will change it back. Now, looking at my field space now, just cancel this. Looking at my field space now, it's seeing it as a number. That's why you can now see this summation sign here. Are we clear? If you go back to your report view, you still see it as a number. It's seeing it as a number. That's why you have this summation sign here. So. What I'm trying to say is that even if for some reasons you didn't finish up your cleaning or your transforming in your power query, there are still some things you can do even while you're on your power BI desktop. And this is just one of it. Is that clear now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, you're welcome. Now, I want to go back to my power query. I'm already in my desktop now. But I want to go back to my Power Query. I can decide to go to this. Um, uh, all I need to do is just come to my home, look for transform data, click on the drop down menu, select transform data, and it will take me back to my Power Query. So this is now our Power Query editor. We're back to our Power Query editor. And then we're trying to bring in another data set that we'll work with. And the first data set that we brought in was um, um, general data. Now, I still want to bring in others. All I need to do, go to my new source, select, assuming that it's Excel, which is actually Excel. And this is the second data set I want to bring in. I'll just pull it in again, as usual. That's the normal way we bring in our data set. And just like I told us before, you, it will come as a table, it will come as normal, not a table, 
I'll just go ahead and take the table. That's okay. And say, okay, bring it in for me. Now I have these two. So these are the two different data sets I want to work with. Now there's something I didn't show us in the first time. Looking at this now, the name of the data set was actually general data. Rather, I think data, I can't remember, whatever. But I don't want to show me as table one. Table one. I don't want that. No, okay for me. So I can come to this side, my power query, that's the property side where we have me. And this is what we call renaming your query. And say, please take this man off. I don't want it to be table one, personal, whatever. I just want it to be personal. Leave it as personal. Once I type in whatever I want to rename it as, click outside. And it immediately renames it for me. The same thing for this. I don't want it to be this. I want you to rename it for me. I'm showing us another method that we can use to achieve it. Just right click on the table that I want to rename and say, rename. Then it will ask you, okay, go ahead and just rename. I don't want this. I just want to, be, to see it as general data. So mother, the audio. Is it just me? I can't hear you. Don't good again. No, me too. I can't hear you. Chama. Chama, we can't hear you. Your audio is working. No, it's, 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 it's sort of husky. There's a way it is. Maybe your earpiece you want to adjust. No. Okay, Chama, please unmute yourself. Let's see. Chama, can you unmute yourself and speak? Is it better now? Yeah, it's clear now. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you. So back to what we were saying, um, I brought in two data sets that belongs to the same persons, but different, located in different locations and in different um, sources. I have um, the one that has their emails, surname, and so on and so forth. And for the personal, it's still the same emails, but different information about the same person. We have occupation, we have blood type, and so on and so forth. Now, notice that the common data between these two data sets is their email. That's like the unique um, um, data and the unique key that they have here. So how do I, I want to merge this too. I want to merge this and this. I can achieve that in Power BI. All I need to do is go to my match queries. It has two options. It will tell you, do you want to just go ahead and match the queries on this particular table that you are on? Or do you want it to be a new one? Yes, I want it to be a new data set altogether. You can say let's um, match as new, and it brings up this um, table, this 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 that we can see here now. And now, assuming I was, it showed me general data by default because I was on it. But assuming I, I don't want that to be the first. I want it to be personal. I can go ahead and say, okay, please. Go. 
this person, I don't want um, general data to be the first, but I mean, looking at it, general data should be the first because that's why you have your email, surname, first name, and so on. And then and tell it, merge it with the person, the second table now. And then you will still go ahead. If you notice, this is not yet highlighted. I can't go ahead. It wants me to tell it what is common between these two tables, the unique key that is unique to the two tables, which is the email address. So I'll go ahead and select the email address and select the email address. Notice that probably I will tell me the selection mass is 1,106 of this. So that means we are good to go. I'll just go ahead and say, okay. And it's going to bring out another data set for this time around, the combination of these two. It doesn't end here. Now, if I scroll down, remember this is the first table that, uh, that was there, which is our general data. Now, the personal came in like this, all right? Came in as personal and it's showing me the table. But this is not what I want. I want it to give me all the different attributes that are on the personal table. What can I do? Just go on this icon here, click on it. Now, come up. And then it brings up something like this. Now, the beautiful thing about merge data, um, merging queries is that it gives you the flexibility to choose the columns you want to bring in. Assuming I don't want to bring in all the columns in that personal data set, I can go ahead and select the ones that I wanted to bring in. Maybe I just wanted to bring in the occupation and maybe their blood type, and that's it. If I say okay now, it will go ahead and bring out just this two. Oh, let's even do it. Oh, we don't have time again. Uh, just to show something. So you notice that the only thing I have now is just the personal occupation and this. But no, hey, I made a mistake. Oh, I don't want just these two columns. So I need more columns on this. How can I do that? Just go to this. Remember that whatever you're doing is showing on your apply steps. Go to the expanded personnel. You can see this icon, the settings icon. That's where you can do your kind of modification or whatever you are doing. Click on it and say, just click on it. It will bring out what you were doing before. And it's going to ask you, okay, you don't want just that. I don't want just this. I want every other thing. Please bring in everything for me. Just bring in everything for me. But I'm sure you don't want your email address occurring twice because you already had it before. I can unselect it and just say, yeah. okay, okay, then one more thing. Look at this. It's telling you default column name prefix is personal. What it means is the table you are bringing it from is called personal. And it's telling you that this would be like the prefix in front of every column on that data set. Let me cancel this so you understand what I'm saying. Notice that when we are bringing in this data set, it renamed it and gave it personal.occupation. And that's because we highlighted, yes, put the personal, the prefix, so that anybody that looks at this data set knows that it's coming from the table named personal, the column named occupation. But if you don't want it, you just want it, okay, just come out, show me as occupation. You can change that. Go back to this and say, okay, please select everything for me there. But don't put in email address because I already have it. And then please don't put this personal. I don't need it showing. I don't need it. It should just show me as operation and the rest and say, okay. And then it's going to bring in the other columns without the occupation and everything. And from what you can see, every other column that we had on personal address, it's now showing here. So that's one way of achieving your match queries. Or rather, that is how to achieve the match query. Because of time, I will just be very fast. Once we do the pen and then we close. I'm so sorry for dragging us this far. Um, for our pen queries, I still want to bring in another data set for that. I am not sure. I know it's a CSV, but I am going to select Excel so that I will explain something to us. And the importance of you knowing what the the type of data um the type of data and is this source here? Yeah, the data source that you're bringing in, and why it's very important for you to know the data source you're bringing in so that you can know what to select. What I want to bring in now is under append. Now, my append is showing me nothing. Does it mean I don't have anything under uh, um, append queries? That's a lie. 
I have like up to 50 data sets there. But because I've chosen Excel, it's not, it's not in any Excel um, and data set there. And that's why it's not showing me as anything. Yes, yeah, so for some people that like shortcuts, you can just come here and tell it, oh yeah, any type of data cell, any type of file, just bring it up. And then it can now bring up the three different data cells and um, sets you have here. So I can go ahead and bring in my leads. Okay. Oh, I need my system to write. So this is my leads and this thing. Remember we're in PowerPoint, that's why it's showing me like this. I'll say, okay, yes, bring it in. That's fine. And I want to bring in, so just like I said, the files that we're bringing in now is a CSV file. So just to play safe, go ahead and choose CSV file. And you'll see it's Liverpool open. Okay. And then finally, This one, which is um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Manchester, yeah. And then I have all my data sets in now. What I want to achieve is appending queries, and just like I said, appending is just like the name, appending it's like under having more rows. Now. We have this data set. Remember I told us that when you want to append, you have to be careful about your colon names. Look at this data set, leads. We have name, base claim, amount, category. Liverpool, we have name, description. In the other one, we had category under as the description. But here it's, it's whoever that typed this is not saying description is the name, dates and amount. And in Manchester, we have claim by, it should be name. Automatically, we know it's a name, but Power BI will not say it as name. So you want to be sure that you are renaming, you are naming your column so that Power BI understands that this column is the same thing as this column. Now I can start with this now. I don't want this claim by to be claim by, it should be name. Okay. And dates, I don't want date claims, it should be dates actually, because I think I saw dates. I'm just being fast now. If not, I should have shown you guys the other ones too. Dates and I don't want it to be okay. Yeah, date page amount category that's fine. Going back to my Liverpool, I have name which is okay. Description of this call it category. Yeah, and then I have date and amount. This is okay. Back to leads. So you just take time to do all this. Date claims. Mm -hmm. This is just the date. Solid. Everything is okay. So now we are good to go. Now, another thing you need to watch out for. Here we have four columns. Liverpool, we have four columns. In Manchester, we have five. Can we still append? Yes. The only difference is that these other two data sets, I don't have um, the extra, this thing we have there is the date page. I don't have that date page. It will now show us null for the first two data sets. But when it comes to Manchester, it will still give us this information. But can we match it? And can we append it? Yes, it's very, very possible. So what we need to do, i start from leads and tell it, I want to append these three tables now. Go to your append queries, okay? I want to append it as a new one. Click on append as new. Uh, yeah, it's out. So Fabia is telling me, is it just two tables? If it's just two tables, you can say yes. But it's more than two tables. It's not just two tables. We have three tables. So I'll say three or more. So even if you have 50 then tables, no problem. Fabia will do it for you. So it will ask me, OK, what are the three tables? Already I recognize that leads is one of them. Which other tables? I want to bring in Liverpool. You can decide to double click on it and it will automatically go to this place. Or you can decide to click on it and click on add. You need to bring this one in as well. So you have the three tables that you want to append. And, so, and then go ahead and say, Pabio, yeah, okay, just go ahead and append it for me. And it will do that for you. So you find out that what you now have here, you have the data set for both Leeds, Liverpool, and Manchester, all in this data set. 
remember you can always rename your data set you can just maybe call it uk and uh, whatever because we're talking about uk city here and then remember what i told you guys because manchester Five columns. We are seeing five columns. But because um, Leeds and Liverpool don't have anything in the date page, that's why you're seeing this null here. But if you scroll down up to the point where Manchester starts, find that you have information for that particular. There we go. I just wanted to show us so that you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Over here, so that means Manchester started somewhere around here, okay, from Benjamin, yeah, Benjamin Owens, and then you can see data set for it. So that's it. So that's it for our match and append queries. Any question? Okay, so remember when you are done with your power query. You want to go back to your power bi all you need to do just go and there are questions in the chat that i put there okay okay we need another demo of match. okay renaming action does not appear on the apply steps only actions done on the table okay okay that's like Okay, I think the only question is just like we're doing it right. Quite, not quite. So I, I noticed that when you um, did those actions, uh, rename it. It doesn't show on the apply steps. That's what I was asking. So it's not supposed to show there, right? It's only what you change on the table that will show on this applied steps. Yeah, part. the steps that apply. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for the match, for the match, we did we matched these two data sets. And for us to achieve this, just go to the data set you want to match. Even though when you click on match, it will do it automatically for you. It's going to prompt out all the tables you have available there. It's always good to match as new. If you just click on match queries, it's just going to work like it's going to match on this general data set that we're already on. But if you click as new, then it will just go to a new, um, a new data set or whatever. So, when you have this now, when I selected this, I was on general data. Assuming I don't want general data to be the best data set I would choose, I can just go ahead and say, oh no, I want general data to be the first. Let's see the personal. Okay. Then come to the second one and tell it the second one should be general data. Fine. But I can still move forward. It's not showing me, okay, I can't okay yet. Why? Because I haven't told um, um, the power query the unique key that we have for the two data sets. Unique key means what is common to the two data sets. In this case now, it's the email. So I'll just go ahead and choose that of um, personal and that of um, general data set. And then probably I know that we are good to go. Now, when this occurs, it will go ahead and tell me the selection matches whatever number of rows you have there. Which is okay. We are good to go. Then you can go ahead and click OK. And it will go ahead and do the pattern for you. Now you can go ahead and rename. Okay. I just say, okay. I don't want it to be much. I want it to be employees data. Employee. Click outside and it has done that for you. So your second question is, how come if I do this, it doesn't show this? Yes, it's not going to show you this. It only works on, how will I explain it now? Like something you have done that is out. Yeah, it doesn't work for naming. Let's just put it like that, simple. It doesn't work for naming. For every other thing, it should show you the steps there. 
but that's how to do your match um, queries. Is that clear? I think that was enough. Yes, thank you. Um, any other question? I'm trying to look at append. Append. I guess that was because I was rushing. So for append, I'm yeah. just going to append these two tables now. I'll just append to for us to see. So I want to append Leeds and Liverpool. Leeds, this is my data set. Liverpool, this is my data set. Go to your append queries. And then it will tell you how many tables do you want to append. In this case, I just want to append two tables. So I will just tell it two tables here. Then it will ask me leads and as new. I want to append two tables. And it's already saying the first table to be leads. Now, what's the second table I want to append? Just go ahead and select the second table, which is Liverpool, and you say OK. So this time around, instead of appending three, like we did before, what we have just done is to append just those two. That's what you have here now. Now, another thing I talked, I said about, I talked about under append is that always make sure that your column names are the same. If we go ahead and just append without having to look at our column names, eh? you know we had one of them showing as description. Probably I would just want to bring out another column here that is description. And for all the ones that have category, it will just be putting no, 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 no. You why it means the same thing. But Power BI doesn't understand that category is the same thing as description. As far as it's concerned, they're two different things. So you want to be sure you are checking out your column names and making sure that they're the same so that probably I recognize, okay, this column is the same as this column. So I should go ahead and append it to so that is it. Any other question? Thank you very much. Any other question? I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I think we are done for today. Sorry for taking longer than expected, but <laughs> I just wanted. I'm to sorry for keeping time. you longer than expected. My many questions. You sound tired. Thank you so much. Oh. Really appreciate. It. Oh <laughs> no 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 no. Sorry. Good evening. Um. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Um, so, I, um, apart from what so we've done all this, how do we like reset so we can do the practical on our own? Come again, please. I said, we're ready. If we want to practice on our own, how do we reset, like, go back on all these changes we've implemented to take it back to the way the data was originally? before we started transforming. So a very simple way to do that, just bring it in as a new data set. Otherwise, if you want to go to your apply steps and start doing cancel, cancel, cancel. But if you want to practice, the best practice would be just bring it in as a new data set and start working on it as a new data set. Don't forget you, have, you still have your raw data, which is the dirty data you have. So you can still bring it in and start working on it. Whatever you have done on Power BI, yeah, in your Power BI, it's only affecting the data that you have brought into Power BI. It doesn't affect the raw data. So if you want to practice, the best thing to do will be to just bring in that raw data and start all over again. Okay, um, one so more question, ma'am. What I'm just saying is that all of the files that we have used today for all this practice is inside the, is on the files section of the channel. So you just download them and then start afresh, import it to your Power BI and then do everything that we've done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, somebody wanted to say something. Mom, one more question. Please go ahead. Yeah, that's me. We are good to um always practice everything we've done in class on a particular data set. Um, and that data was um, 
the code encode three projects. Now you said the date I was not dating you know, So our new project is it the sales copy three, or we should see uh, the code three? So because we wanted to treat um cleaning and transforming, I needed to show us all the different things we can do. It doesn't mean that every data set you bring in, you need you need to do all those things. Some data sets might just be as good as, you know, they, should, they might just be very clean, but just one or two things that you need to do on it. So for every data set that you work on, all you need to do is to look at that data set critically and see if there is anything you want to do that will help it make more sense by the time you start analyzing it. It could be changing the data type. It might, not be, it might be that you don't need to replace anything. It might be you don't even need to rename. Maybe all, all you need to do is just to work on the data types or maybe just match them some columns or, you know. So you just look at the data set that you are given and identify what you need to do on it. Why I, I kind of try to work on the other one, like make it a little bit dirty so that you can be able to look at the different types of things that you can do other data cleaning. That's for me. That's basically it. So any data set you are given, just look for what is not right in that data set. Work on it. Exactly. Okay, thank you, Ma. Last question. So, okay. um, after we work on the data giving, is it like you're done, done with the data, you're sure you're done? Is it a way to save it? So, when, when you say we you know, okay, you're done with this particular data, because for every problem we've done, all we did was the close and apply, and that was it. And now, that's close and apply. It's if, like you're doing, if you want to work on raw data, you can just always import. So exactly. close and apply is like, okay, let me, let me. So there's no way you can save a data to like reflect the system. Hmm? Come again. I didn't get that. I said, so there's no way you can transformation and visualization okay. and everything. Okay, so, 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 okay, I get a question now. I, yeah, I can hear Hello. you now. So basically, I can hear you. Can't you hear me? Okay. Okay. Again. Hello. Hello. Can anyone hear Hello? me? Hello. Sure, it's not from my end. Yes, Ma, I, I think can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me, Ma? Can you hear me? Yeah, for me, for me, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me too? Okay. So as you said that um close and apply. Yes, ma'am. You said yes. the close and apply when, it is like saving yes. it. Yes. When you so do close, close and, and apply. apply it. Ma'am, so after closing and applying, can I go back and where can I go back to check the so, data that I worked on? Like after closing and applying. So when you close and apply, whatever you have done. Will show here on your fuse and on your fuse screen, and you can of course see whatever you have done on your data. But by the time you are done with all this and you want to save your work, please you have to still save your work. The normal way we save our work. Okay, that's I think that's what she's asking. Yes, I think I get that now. Yeah. Go to your file and save us or save. save if you have yeah. saved it before, just click on save. If you have not saved it before, you can now go ahead and say save us and save it anywhere you want to work. So it's asking me, do you want to apply all these changes? Because there are some things I've not loaded and changed and saved. That's why it's giving me this prompting. So if for some reasons you haven't done some apply them steps, it will be bringing up this, which you can now say, okay, apply. And then if you apply it, you can now go ahead and save your work, your different on your system. Whenever you come back to that work, whatever you have done on Power Query always remain because on power query you have saved it by yes, saying close well, and apply yeah. so that's it i don't know if okay thank you ma clear now yeah okay. yes ma'am it is thank you so much any other question that's a good one i think that's all we've really tried for today <laughs> it's already like two hours <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, guys. I don't know. 
Any other input from Gloria, Inka, Franca? Other thing from you guys? Yeah, that was that, that was a wonderful presentation. I think you actually answered the question yeah. that um, when you started, Fumi um, was giving like an intro on how to get data. And then you just go to where your data is, but you're able to resolve that. So in case you make it, you must actually specify um, what kind of data you're bringing in, if it's an Excel, if it's a flat fly or whatever, whatever type of data you are bringing in. But that was that was actually good. I think in the course of the class, you actually answered that question. It, OK, you clicked Excel, but the file you clicked, um, you open or your folder, there's no Excel file there, but you can actually just ask the question. So that was that was actually good i think also the um the data sets that we have uh, that we're working with just to answer for me whatever work you do there whenever you come back you will still see them if you intend to continue you know to, or to add to what you have done it will just be there so as long as you have given it um, a name but it was beautiful well i appreciate if we go all of us go and um, try try out what we have done and look for all that did and look for our own data sets to to work with but that was good thank you thank you thank you. thank you okay thank you yeah so yeah i think you said everything so thank you everyone for coming so just like chama said our project data remains our project data and like Chema has also said, so it's not all data that you import that you need to clean or append or carry out some specific steps. So for example, in our project data, there's really no need for append or any of those things. So if you need to practice append and all the other things that we did today that are not covered in the project data, just download today's um, files from the file section and use it to practice. But the project, the data, data we had shared before for our project is what will remain for our project that we will submit. So I hope everyone is clear with that. And that's the end of today's class. Thank you for joining us. Sorry, and which one is the project data? Can you clarify? The very first one if that was know, sent last okay. week. The very first one is the one we are still going to continue using for the rest of the class. The project data, if you go to the file section, you see cohort three projects and cohort three project two. They are clearly named as, I think text alas cohort three projects. There's two of them, shall projects and projects two. So the two of them, and I had said people can choose any one of them that they like to use for their projects. Are there any other questions? Okay, is there no other questions? Yeah? That's it for today. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Choma, Gloria, and every other person for joining us. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Good night.